Welcome back to another video on variables and strings. Some key points to take away on variables. The first one is variable names are case sensitive. So the words age and age with a capital A are two different variables. The next one down, the first letter of Boolean, true and false need to be capitalized as in the T and the F need to be uppercase or else Python produces an error. Some words are reserved and cannot be used and we will see these in the next slide. Variables cannot have special characters in them, just letters and numbers and underscore can be used as well. So that's the exception. The underscore can be used as a special character, but no other special characters. And the last one is variables cannot start with a numeric value. They can have numeric values in them, but they cannot start with them. And there are some best practices with variables and I follow these three in particular below. These are with variables, use clear and meaningful names so you know what the variable is, i.e. not a equals 25, use age equals 25. So make sure it's meaningful. So when someone else is reading the Python program, they know exactly what that variable is. And you should use an underscore to separate multiple words to make the variable more readable, i.e. don't use my age, all in one word, write my underscore age, which is a lot easier to read. And finally, be consistent with using capitalization. So either making the first word a capital or leaving them all small. I usually leave mine all small. So when I create my variables and I use them elsewhere, I know consistently I have them as all small and it's less prone to making errors. And here is a list of Python reserve keywords which cannot be used as variable names. Or for that matter, they cannot be used for function names either or anything that identifies something. Also notice that these are case sensitive if you happen to use any of these reserved words. Like we have just covered, true and false need to be capitalized as we can see here. And the word none is capitalized as well, but everything else is in lower case. Now covering off some additional things, multiple line strings, with strings that span across multiple lines, we use three quotes and they can be single or double quotes. For example, if you need to add a comment or a string over multiple lines, then we will type message equals. Then I can use my three quotes. I will go with three single quotes. And because this time I'm using PyCharm, it knows that I need another three quotes to end my multiple line string. So it's automatically put them in for me. Enter. You are logged in to a secure box. Only authorized users are permitted. Regards. Admin team. And let's print the message. Print message. And there's a typo in my word authorized. So in UK, we spell it with an S, not a Z. I'm missing an R in there. And then we can run this. So we can go to run, run first pi file. Or on the right hand side here, I can just click on here, rerun first pi file. Or over here, run first pi file. And now we can see our message over here. Now there's a couple of things with special characters. First, with strings, you can use single or double quotes to start and finish the string and within the string itself. But also there's a special character, which is a backslash, which we can use to ignore the quotes within the string itself. Let's have a look at that. Now, if we print a string, print, and I like to use single quotes, Chaffers Python training. Now it's already got confused because I've used one here as well in my string itself. So I've got a quote here and to complete my quote, I need one at the end of the string, but because I've already used two, one to start the string off and one within my string, I've confused it because it thinks this is the start of my string and this is the end of my string. And this is all meaningless. So if I put my quotes in here, it gives me two quotes to write another string. So what I can do instead is use a backslash to ignore this quote here, backslash, and then remove this one. So what I'm saying here is this is the start of the string with this quote, 
and then I've got one to complete the string because this backslash is telling Python to ignore whatever character comes after it. So if we run this, let's remove the previous stuff. So if we run this using the print, we need the open parenthesis as well and the closed parenthesis. And let's run the program. And we can now see my word with my quote inside there perfectly fine. Jaffa's Python training. But what if we wanted to use a backslash itself inside my string? In that case, we'll need to escape it with another backslash. Of course, this is if you're using a backslash in conjunction with a quote or a special character within a string, because a backslash is there to ignore quotes and double quotes or to use them with special characters like the small r. So let's say in this example, we was typing in backslash and the small r which usually means a carriage return is a special character. But let's say we was typing something like resources. Of course, we would usually write it with a, a capital R and that would bypass it altogether. But let's say we had to use a small R in this case because the backslash is here. It's thinking of a carriage return. So what we'll do in this case, if we run the file, we can see it's giving us a strange output and it's excluded the R in resources. So what we'll do in this case is add another backslash and that would ignore it. So this time it will treat the backslash as a standard backslash as part of the string itself. So let's run that again. And now we can see it's printed out my string perfectly fine. And just for completeness, there are common reasons why you would use a backslash within a string. You can use it to ignore the quotes and double quotes. You can use a double backslash if you want to use an actual backslash within a string, which we just saw. And a backslash can be used with a T for a tab, or a backslash R for carriage return, a backslash N for new line, or a backslash B for backspace. So these are the special characters a backslash can be used with. And like most things in Python, there are multiple ways of printing variables and strings to form sentences. Let's have a look at these. And if I wanted to print my name and say something, let's type name equals my name, age equals 40. And now we can print name, which is one variable separated by a comma which is a separate argument itself is again we want to separate it with a comma let's use our second variable which is age comma years old so this is my sentence i want to print let's run this and we can see it's printed out my sentence but there's also another way to do this let's type print again name plus this time we are using the plus operator to concatenate the variable name and the string is we can do this in this instance because they are actually both strings one's a variable referencing a string and the is is a string itself comma age comma and another string years old now if we run this one we can see there's a slight issue where it's printed out the sentence However, when running this, it does not add a space between the variable name and the string is. So what we can do is add a space before the string is like this and run it again. And that has fixed the issue. And the reason for that is because each of these are separate arguments separated by a comma, which means it adds a space by default. And because name plus is is joined together within the argument itself, separated by comma, it's using the separation between is and age and the separation between age and years old, but there's no separation here. So this is why we have had to add one manually. And now if for some reason you wanted to use multiple print statements to print the same sentences like this, print my age is, and then again print age, print and I am based in the UK. So if we run this, let's remove the old statements. 
we will see this printed fine, but with a separate line for each of our statements. And now this is because if we go back to the print statements and if we click on them, there's a couple of arguments as part of the print statement. So one is set, which is string inserted between values, default a space, and set means put in a blank space. And this is the default after each argument as we have just had a look at. And then there's end, string appended after the last value, default is new line which means put in a new line after the print function. And this is also the default. So this explains why we did not have to put in a new line after each of these statements, because it does this for us by default. So the way we change this around, let's have a look at these statements first. The way they are written is sep with a colon colon and end equals backslash quote end quote. So this is how it looks by default. This means put in a new line. So if we copy this, and now if I paste this at the end of my statement, so if we paste it at the end of here, but let's take the end out for new line. So this time what we are saying, do not follow the defaults, end it without a new line. So there's no end in here. And let's do it again over here and remove the end again. Now, if we run this, and of course we've got an error because I forgot to take the backslash out and that's why it's red as well. So let's take the backslash out and run this again. This time, as we can see, it's printed out the statement in a single line. So that's how you would do that. And just to add the spaces after is and before and, we can do that manually. Again, let's put a space in here. And before and, let's put in another space and run it again. So that's how you would fix that as well. I'm going back to the original statements. This is why we do not need to put in a separator as they have a separate argument separated by the comma. So it knows to use the separator, which is really a blank space after the comma. And again, it could not do it on this line here because they are joined together as part of one argument and the comma is here. But of course, that's another thing you can put in the sep and the colons to say, okay, I want to add a separator over here. And that's another way of doing it as well. You can use a sep argument to add a blank space wherever required in your print statements. Now, another way to write this is to use something known as formatted strings. Well, they're called formatted string literal or F string, which is the recommended way to format strings and it works with Python 3.6 and above. So it's fairly new and is prefixed with a small f or a capital F and we use curly braces. So let's have a look at that. So what we will do here is we'll use the small f for formatted string and then a quote, put these in curly braces, the name. Let's put it in again and remove this one is and then put my other variable, the age, in curly braces as well. Age, let's remove this. Let's remove all of this. And after age, let's put in years old and close it off with a quote. Let's run this. And it's printed out my statement, Jaffa is 40 years old. But the difference is it's done all the formatting for us. So we didn't have to add the quotes and the commas for all of these, it's done it all for us. We can also do something like, so let's create a new variable, my underscore value equals 250, I think a million is six zeros. Now let's print out my value of 250 million. And usually with 250 million, we should see commas after starting from the end, after each three digits. So we should see one here and we should also see one here as well. So let's ask my print statement to do that using F string. So that would be print F for formatted string and a quote. Now open it up with curly braces, my underscore value. And after this, we want to specify a colon and the comma symbol. And let's run this. So we can see it's put in the commas for us. So it's done that for us as well. 
So formatted strings is a very useful feature to get familiar with. As we have seen, it helps with formatting the strings.